Tumor saya telah tu tumbuh sangat besar dalam dua tahun terakhir ini. Saya baru-baru ini membuat film dokumenter lahir yang ber yang ber berbeda dan karena film itu viral saya telah ditawar. Wow, what a difficult, difficult problem. Let's find out what this gentleman has and hopefully we can see a good resolution to his story. This is Andriotti. Tumor saya telah menjadi sangat berat. Beratnya sekarang 30 kg. 30 kg is about 66 pounds. That's what is hanging from his face and his chest. Now he appears to have neurofibromatosis and this is a cluster of basically tumors that can grow on your nerves and it can be quite painful. Sulit melakukan apapun dengan tumor ini dan saya di terlahir dengan kondisi penyakit langka yang disebut neuropipromatosis. So neurofibromatosis is inherited from your parents. It's autosomal dominant, meaning if you have one parent with it, you have about a 50% chance of getting it. And in this condition, typically you get these small tumors that can grow on various nerves and nerve sheaths. And you can see that on his arms, those kind of round bumps. That's a more common presentation of neurofibromatosis. But what he has growing and hanging from his body you see that occasionally with neurofibromatosis, but this is very unusual. And the big question I'm sure you're wondering is, why didn't he get this treated a long time ago? Today is the day of Andriotti's surgery, and the procedure is not without its risks. Jadinya, kemungkinan kata dia, kata dokter, ya kalau pemburu darahnya terus mengalir, ukurannya patal. So why isn't it so simple as just to lop these masses off and to stitch it together? Well, in order for these masses, and you're talking over 66 pounds worth, there has to be blood supply to keep those areas alive. And the blood vessels to supply enough blood for something that huge have got to be quite, quite large. Now, the average person has anywhere from about four to six liters of blood coursing around inside their body. And you can lose up to maybe half of that at most prior to dying from it. Now, when you cut into a huge blood vessel, you can lose a liter of blood fairly quickly. So this is definitely something that could be very, very risky for this gentleman. But Andriotti is willing to try anything to get his life back. Well, what a tough situation for this gentleman. I have to assume that one reason why he didn't have it treated before was probably financial and the availability of actual surgical treatments. We are so lucky to be here in the United States, some other countries that have much more developed and available medical systems. That's why we don't see this type of thing here because typically we take care of them before they get to this extent. So I'm really hoping that his surgeon can help get rid of these masses safely for him because that has become quite a large undertaking as huge as these masses are. Dr. Eddie Citrisno will be leading the surgery today. So it looks like he's gonna go after the big one first, which probably is not a bad idea because that's the one I think that weighs the most and that causes him the most difficulty with movement and ambulation. And if I were doing an operation like this, I would start off very slowly where you cut literally little bits at a time because the big thing, once again, is you wanna be able to control any type of bleeding in the wound. The worst case is you've got a surgeon who's acting like they think they're a swashbuckler and they just start cutting away <laughs> Once again, you can lose blood so quickly through a large vein or, or a large artery that it could become a life or death situation in literally seconds. The other thing that I hope that they have available are blood products, transfusions. In case he does lose blood, you've already typed and cross-matched him, so all you have to do is hang the blood from an IV. Finally, doing this operation, hopefully he has a central line. Now there's a difference between an IV that you get in your arm or in your foot and an IV that goes into a large, vessel in your body, a large vein. These central lines can be put around the neck area or in the groin and you can transfuse large amounts of fluid very, very quickly, which is the opposite is if you have, let's say, a small IV at the end of your hand. Tumornya sendiri banyak, ada di badannya, ada di punggungnya, ada di ketiaknya, ada di wajahnya. 
Tapi saat pertama ini yang paling penting yang harus kita buang adalah yang paling mengganggu adalah yang berada di badannya, di dadanya, yang beratnya mungkin sekitar dua. So large procedures like this would be performed under a general anesthesia and the anesthesiologist should have a team there, usually at least one anesthesiologist and maybe a CRNA, certified registered nurse anesthetist, to aid with all the fluid and anesthesia related issues. Doing it under a general anesthesia gives the surgeon and the anesthesiologist the most control and that way if anything bad at all happens, they don't have to worry about his airway and the fact that he you know, may not be able to breathe or something like that. Because the masses in neurofibromatosis are attached to nerves, they can create pain throughout the whole body depending on the location of these tumors. There is a small chance that some of these tumors can become cancerous and there are some people who have tumors all over their body, just little bumps scattered throughout their body. One of the signs of a good surgeon is you always think about the worst thing that can happen with an operation and how do you prevent it. For me, that's on my mind with every operation I do. What is the worst thing that can happen to this patient and how do I prevent that from happening? Well, obviously the worst thing is that patient can die. But short of that, then what other complications can happen? So for example, when I do eyelid surgery and removing puffiness under the eye, the worst thing that can happen is a bleeding complication that can occur, let's say, behind the eyeball. That can increase the pressure behind the eyeball and cause a person to go blind. When you're doing liposuction of the tummy, if that person has, let's say, a hernia, and that hernia has an intestine sticking through it, you can literally stick a cannula or that liposuction cannula through the intestine, damaging the intestinal wall, and that can cause somebody to get really, really sick. After many hours on the operating table, the team at the hospital were able to remove the largest part of the tumor. But Andriadi lost a lot of blood during the operation. Every operation we do, we monitor how much blood loss there is, and the OR nurse and the anesthesiologist and the surgeon keep track of that, and it's an estimation. Now, when you get to a certain amount of blood loss, then you have to consider, do you transfuse the patient? Now, we don't transfuse people willy-nilly because there are risks with transfusions, and even though the blood supply here in the United States is essentially very clean, there's always a potential risk of some type of a blood-borne infection. Seven days later, and Andriadi is finally well enough to leave hospital and return home to his family. Operasi saya semen dulu pertama tidak sebelum rencana karena karena saya pendarahan. Well, it's so good that he's not carrying around that whole mass that was hanging from his chest. But you can see he still has quite a bit of that neurofibroma type masses hanging from his face. That is going to be not as difficult because it's much smaller. And technically, you could start by doing more of a debulking, where you just remove a good portion of it and then essentially come back at a later time to much more intricately remove the areas from his face to try to give him as natural of an appearance as possible. Well, what a sweet guy. I really wish him well and I hope that he gets the help that he needs. So this gentleman had over 60 pounds hanging from his chest, but there was a woman who had legs that literally weighed 210 pounds just her legs on a small top body. How did her legs get so disproportionately massive and what happened when she tried to improve her situation? Take a peek at this video right up here that tells her story and my reaction to it. And remember, eat real food, use clean skincare, and auto-juvenate before you operate.